I. Sovereignty is one of the most needed attributes for our planet right now as a collective and individually. Remembering that the individual makes up the collective. So that means you. If I were to name the top three things that the planet needs is unconditional love, which is synonymous to erasing shame, eradicating shame, sovereignty, and proper boundaries. Those are not the most, the three most important things for the planet. They're within the top five, at least. Um, so sovereignty is, we'll define it. It's you being the governing system of yourself, which is essentially thinking for yourself. Um, and we are so not sovereign that a lot of times we think we're thinking for ourselves and we're not. And this is all, you can look at it as an external mind control or mind manipulation, um, but it also is, you know, our natural, it's, it's been the course of our conditioning. Um, Cause you have to remember we have a hand in everything that we are experiencing, everything that we have manifested. It hasn't been all done to us. We have an equally active role in what we are experiencing on this planet. So because we don't think for ourselves so much, that is how we are all mind control. Like that is the definition of mind control. So that's why or how everyone on the planet is mind controlled. So I'll give you an example of how we think we're thinking for ourselves, but we're not. And this builds on some of what I've talked about before, like in the video, False Spirituality, um, where I say, <laughs> um, sorry, I'm laughing at, <laughs> it might be weird that I laugh in videos when I'm laughing at my own thoughts and you're like, what the fuck are you laughing at? They're the thoughts in my head and you can't see them. So, but I promise it's funny. <laughs> um, I was laughing at the irony of the mind control inherent in people's response to the false spirituality that I talk about. Um, and whatever your definition of false spirituality is, that's fine. But there's, a, I have a very specific definition of my own. It's my own um, perspective. And I describe it pretty much in that video. And so the main concept is that thinking for yourself, truly thinking for yourself, means that your own being will generate brand new thoughts. This means thoughts that have never been thought before. And they will come from your core, essentially from your heart organ itself. And I explain all of this in that video, False Spirituality. And I even say that specifically, if you adopt someone else's perspective because it sounds good to you, AKA it resonates or someone else is reminding you of what you already know. That is what I'm specifically talking about as false spirituality. This is not self-generating thoughts. And I just, I don't understand. Therefore, I think it's pretty fascinating that a lot of people's response to my video, false spirituality is, oh, I'm so on board. I only accept, I only listen to other people and accept what resonates. 
look, you're welcome to do whatever the fuck you want. But I just want to point out that it's specifically the opposite of what I'm talking about. So don't try to say you understand what I'm talking about because that ain't it. <laughs> and this just goes to show how much we don't think for ourselves. Like this concept that I'm talking about, people can't even conceptualize and you won't. You will not be able to conceptualize it until you start to do heart, like very specific heart bonding, heart connection exercises. Um, like what I put forth in the video, how to connect to your highest wisdom instantly. Um, and you can, you know, you can adjust it for you and your needs, but it's a very basic, super simple practice. Um, that will connect you to your own hearts and it's only then will you be able to your the thoughts that you're being generates as I said comes from your heart you won't be able to find these thoughts to have them you won't be able to find what is self-generated or allow it to come out come through you until you have created a very strong energetic bond with your heart. Otherwise, you are going to be perpetually repeating different versions of what others have said. You're going to be repeating the same versions of what has already been other people's opinions. They're going to be like, we live in a state where other people's opinions have been recycled and like washed down, watered down and reconstituted, but it's all the same thing. <laughs> and it's also just weird because we take a pure concepts and then we just turn it into like garbage. We, we totally break down that concept. And it happens over time. It's not even like we're developing on this concept. It's just, it, it happens over generations and how one person interprets it or misinterprets it. They're like, oh, I know exactly what Jesus was talking about, let me tell you. And it's just like the, it also is, um, includes elements of um, things getting distorted. Like, have you ever played the telephone game? Where like you, you sit in a circle or in a line of people and someone whispers into your ear, someone whispers into the ear of the person next to them, whatever they want. And then that person takes what they think they heard, whispers it to the next person, so forth and so forth, all the way down the line. And then you compare what the last person says with the first person, <laughs> and they don't fucking match. And so that's also what we're doing with a lot of um, spiritual concepts, but that's not just how these pure concepts, like original, original thoughts and philosophies get mucked up. There's... Um, I mean, we're also like, we're just shitting all over it <laughs> and original concepts just get reconstituted in like, um, in a unpure, impure form. So the planet's in a state of recycling garbage. Like that is all of the philosophies <laughs> that exist now. Recycled garbage. When was the last time an original idea came from another came from the inside of a person i'm not even talking about like what your mind came up with because your mind your brain is going to be working on everything that it's accumulated from its surroundings and environments you can't escape that original thought comes a hundred percent from the heart organ itself it is the only place where original thought will ever come from. Like I said, I find it really fascinating how people can't even conceptualize of what I'm saying, but it does also make sense if they haven't created that specific heart bonds and experienced 
brand new original thoughts emanating from their heart organ itself, then they, they won't know. They won't know what I'm talking about. You have to experience it to know it. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you do that practice that I put forth in the video, how to connect to your highest twist instantly. And then get the ball rolling and you will be like, oh my gosh, I know what's in, I know the originality and the truth of my own being. And no, it's not the reflection of everyone else like I was taught. Or really, who knows what you'll find there? You're the only one who will ever know. Do you see how important it is to go find it? The rest of the world will never no, the divine wisdom that you were brought here to share unless you go and find it and share it and live by it. You are literally depriving the world of what you were created for. So sovereignty is seated in heart connection. Thinking for yourself is how you become the governing system of your own self. If you are not thinking for yourself, you cannot govern your own self. Someone else external to you or ideas external to you, conditioning external to you, your environment, your surroundings, your DNA, which is passed down generational belief systems, they will all be governing you. And pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> um, and you are not in control of yourself then. You will be controlled by other people. You will always be at the mercy of other people, whether they are intentionally controlling you or not. You will always be at the mercy of another individual and or groups of people, masses of people, constantly, all the time, everywhere you go. You will not be living for yourself in of and as your true self. You won't be able to respond to situations on of your own accord. You will be responding how you were conditioned to, and this is all very subconscious. This is a subconscious process. This is how we have lived our entire lives on the planet. Since the history of humans on the planet, this mind control is how we've been living. We are literally trapped out of our own minds because your mind is seated in your heart's organ. And I mean, that's just the beginning, really. You're, that heart organ connection is just the beginning of generating your own thoughts because it's not like it's a one-time thing like you make that connection and then everything that you are comes out all at once a lot of what you are might come out all at once but it will as you go on living your life experiencing different things having different interactions you from your truth that's inside of you, inside of your heart, you will be generating new thoughts from those new interactions, from those new situations in response. So more original thoughts come from additional experiences, new experiences. So this is going to be a lifelong process thinking for yourself generating brand new original thoughts that are only of yours and i just want to circle back to what i was talking about how no one can remind you of your truth this idea in the new age religion that you can see a reflection of your truth from someone else from what they say from who they are and you'll you'll have a sense that it's right in some way it resonates is what we like to call it and then that apparently means it's yours what 
Did it come from you? No. <laughs> Do you know what mirrors are? They are used as illusions. So this concept of seeing your truth reflected to you is an intentional mind control illusion that actually um, that specific bit just came to me um, like I just channeled that specific bit of how <laughs> of how intentional that whole philosophy is set up as mind control people survivors or perpetrators of MK ultra will know how much mirrors are used as illusions to create false realities and confusion, um, overlapping realities and overlapping senses of identity. And that is what is happening in the spiritual society. We're overlapping our identities with others and getting very confused um, in the process and we don't have a sense of self. And without a sense of self, you can't think for yourself. If you don't have self, who is it that's thinking for you then? It's not self. Boundaries and sovereignty actually go hand in hand. They are both needed to have the other. You need one to have the other. And so I'll make a video in the future on boundaries also. And then from there, I will explain how they've explained further how they fit together and why they are both so crucial to our freedom the freedom of our personal power, the freedom of our personal divinity, the freedom of our minds, the freedom of our consciousness, the soul and the mind is consciousness. It's actually, and our consciousness is divinity. It comes from divinity. It is an expression of divinity itself. Therefore, it, sovereignty and boundaries are freedom for everything. It is freedom of God. Um, and I just wanted to also mention how funny it is that <laughs> it's a slip up that the Illuminati had, um, earlier this year, they had responded or actually it was like shortly after I released that video, false spirituality, um, which is like that concept is like to me one of the most important things for the planet, for every human. Um, and someone on YouTube had sent me um, a kind of long message, and I could already tell it was Illuminati. They had um, like a Christian profile, like a Christian name and um, a Christian little picture, profile picture or whatever. Um, and I forget what it is, unfortunately, but, um, and they told me that they completely disagreed with my false spirituality video and that if I'm not, if people aren't living exactly by the scriptures of the Bible, then, uh, it isn't true spirituality. <laughs> I I uh, talk about disempowering and people thinking for you, <laughs> aka my control. Um, and so because of their Christian um, fanaticism, you know what I mean? And um, which is, which I've already long ago identified as um, an Illuminati cover or MK Ultra programming because of that and this person's energy like you know you can psychically you can feel 
Illuminati energy. Um, I, it was clear they were Illuminati. And, um, and I didn't respond. Um, and then a couple months later, um, they, oh, wait, was this in the first email or the first message? Yeah, also, this was in their first message to me where they said, you're not living by the Bible scriptures, and that is false spirituality. And what you have said about false spirituality is all wrong. And they also, they used program trigger words on me too, which is why I knew they were Illuminati. Um, and which was, the program trigger was calling me um, a Freemason Illuminati teacher. Their message started out with, you are not a shaman, you are a Freemason Illuminati teacher. And, um, and I knew that already that that was a specific program trigger for me. Meant to, in part, there's different parts of this program, but part of it is to make me doubt what I'm talking about or my sense of personal truth, which is why they also swooped in with that, um, if you are not living by this, then it is wrong. What you said is wrong. You're feeding off that program that they had intended to trigger with the first sentence of their message. And at this point, the, the, it was this precise point that the Illuminati had stopped sending attacks to me that were like just pure demonizing attacks. They actually tried to mix in um, like covert demonizing with compliments. <laughs> um, so they also said, oh, you're such a beautiful soul. First they start out, you're an Illuminati teacher. You're such a beautiful soul. That's, that was somewhere towards the end of their message. And then they signed it with their name. And like I said, it was clear this is all Illuminati to me. Then what happens a couple months later? Same account, same person messages me. And they say they were addressing the fact that I had at that time turned off comments to all my videos. Um, and they said, Rachel, if you never if you don't let people attack you and bring you down, you won't have the chance to fight for yourself. And then they had like some rationale of how fighting was like my redemption um, of truth or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then what did they do? They had slipped up. There was a glitch in this person's programming because the Illuminati that, like the Illuminati employees or agents that they use are programmed themselves, but they make mistakes. Like the Illuminati as a whole, even the leaders who aren't themselves programmed, they make mistakes. And then there's going to be glitches in others' programming. And here is their glitch. They signed it. Illuminati. <laughs> oh, the dumb fuckers. Um, and then I was going to make a video. I was going to screen share it and make a video. And guess what? Oh, those messages disappeared. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I mean, if you're here and you're like, oh, I don't believe you, where's the proof? It sounds like you just made all that up. Then, you know, if you're here wanting me to prove, like, prove my experiences to you, that is just not what I live for. And you'll never, you'll never get that from me. Um, so sorry. But for those of you otherwise, you can just appreciate the story. <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. So be aware that the Illuminati makes mistakes. They will hang themselves. And yeah, so think about also why was the Illuminati attacking my, when they were first posing as a regular person, why were they attacking my video on false spirituality? Maybe because there's some divine truth in that. Maybe because there's personal empowerment in that. Maybe because it's liberation of consciousness in that. 
They're not going to spend time attacking um, something that isn't a threat to them and their control and manipulation over us as a planet. I'll soon make a video talking about how you, further ways that you can start to build your sovereignty. So the heart connection is a seed point and it is completely necessary. This is the foundation and everything else will branch off that, but there are additional things that you can layer on top of that afterwards as well. So I'll make a video outlining some of that. So stay tuned. Take care guys.